Hey everybody, Chris Petri here. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. We're just going to do a quick video on some techniques that we use here on my channel. Um, Chris Petri uh, is my YouTube channel, just my simple name. And then actually uh, below on the right hand side, if you want to subscribe, uh, there's a subscribe button. This way you don't lose track of me. You can keep in touch and uh, watch our videos every week. We make two or three videos every week and we do beginners videos called extreme beginner series videos and then we do more advanced videos for people that are already painting for a couple of years or so so if you're a grizzled pro and you've been around in watercolor for a while you can paint along with us and do our advanced paintings and uh, you might learn some new techniques or new methods of doing things and as well as if you're just beginning my extreme beginners videos are perfect for you gives you all the details of all you need to do to start out in watercolor, buying very inexpensive art supplies so you're not, uh, you know, breaking the bank, trying to buy all kinds of fancy brushes and papers and all that kind of stuff. You start out with real simple, inexpensive supplies, and you get started, and you work for a couple months or so, and if you like it, then you can go out and buy some better materials and brushes and so forth. So we cover everything here on my channel. Let's get started. We're just going to cover two basic approaches that I always use in all of my videos, and you'll always hear me talking about them, so let's kind of cover it right here, right now. So the first one, we're just going to take a little bit of tape here. I'll just tape off my sections here as we work. So I'll just take a, some tape here. and It's always nice to sometimes if you're doing small compositions and things, you can just tape some sections off. And uh, then when you lift up the tape, it's kind of already framed out for you. So this might be something you'll keep in a folder once you do this exercise here. You might keep this in a folder in your studio or nearby in a drawer or in a box or something or a little plastic bin if you want to keep all your art supplies in one place that's always a good thing so the first thing we're going to do is just talk about the uh, glazing technique glazing technique a quick idea of the glazing technique and you'll hear me constantly talking about this on my videos. Let's see what it is. Let's try it out. Okay, I'll take some fresh clean water. Let's just pretend we're doing a sky wash. Some blue. French ultramarine blue. Cerulean blue. Maybe a touch of burnt sienna to mellow out the color. But there we go. The glazing technique. And then we just Put a bunch of water on the paper and let it flow on down. Just like that. As simple as that. Look how simple that is. You could add a little darker wash up top like that. There we go. Now the key to this is we have to let this dry. We're using the glazing technique. Your first wash, your first glazing is always going to be lighter. So you can kind of see how this is sort of light. It's not too dark, not, you know, relatively speaking, it's not as dark as some of these colors you'll see here on the palette. Over here, let's say these are pretty dark, right? French ultramarine blue, purple, blue, brown. These are pretty dark colors. So you can see this is lighter. It's kind of like watered it down, so to speak. So we added plenty of water. And you know, you could add some darker bits of uh, color to it like so. But that's pretty much the start to the glazing technique. And we'll finish the glazing te technique in just a second. We, gotta let we have to let this dry. That's the key to the glazing technique. You must let your first wash that we've just completed now dry 100%. You can do it two ways. You can let it dry naturally for about an hour or two, or maybe two or three hours. Or you can use a blow dryer and blow dry this. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop the tape and come right back. And we'll pick up where we left off. But I'm going to dry this off now quick with a blow dryer. Okay, just for effect, I put my blow dryer on there quick. Everything is dry 100%. This first wash. Now, with the glazing technique, we can add in anything you might like that you see is interesting could be flowers could be buildings homes houses trees let's do some trees so we'll just take some green and some burnt sienna we'll make like some trees here so this will be the glazing technique where now we're going to go over and maybe do some trees and i'm just going to scrub on some paint with my flat brush and you can kind of see i'm leaving some spots for the birds to fly through we don't want to make trees that where the birds can't fly through we want them to be able to zip right through there if they'd like to 
and that is what we're going to do. So there we go. We've put our second glazing on now. So now we're working on our second glazing and we'll take another brush, a round brush. This is from my um, Extreme Beginners videos. If you see, I'll explain everything on the Extreme Beginners. If you type in Extreme Beginners videos, you'll see my videos on my brushes and the Prang palette that I use on Extreme Beginners. So I'll use my, my Extreme Beginners uh, arts gear here on this painting. And there we go. Look, we're just going to make some beautiful tree trunks here. Just like this. Just a few indications, nothing fancy, right? We're not, you can tell I'm not really... Just a couple. And that is fine. And then we'll do some more greens. Let's do some grass. So some sap green, a little bit of the brown mixture. Nice olivey kind of brown color. We'll make a little bit of some grass here, just across. A little bit of blue in there too, maybe. Just like that. There we go. Perfect. Look how good that looks. And there you have it, the glazing technique. Your first wash, a light wash over the whole paper. Let it dry 100%, whether you let it dry naturally for an hour or two, or you use a blow dryer. Then you go over with whatever subject matter you like. I happen to make a couple trees here, maybe a couple bushes here. We can make some bushes too. So we can have a couple of happy bushes next to the trees. You can do anything you like over the top of your first glazing. It's up to you and you can change the colors too. You can make it a sunset color like gold like a golden reddish sunset color and then put the same thing, trees or a park or maybe some buildings or some figures, whatever you like. It's your happy painting world. You do what you like, but you can kind of see how that's how the glazing technique works. All right, we're going to come back. We're going to do the a la prima technique and a la prima method next, right next to this one. So you see the two and um, that's basically, in a nutshell, my techniques in two different styles. Be right back. All right, we're starting our second method, the a la prima method. So we're going to do the second method I use. Basically, first method we use, te glazing technique in watercolor. That I use a lot in my watercolors, as well as the a la prima method, which is my second method that I use. And Anything I do in watercolor is basically a cross between these two, either the glazing technique or the a la prima method. A la prima method, let's go over here. Let's just do a quick idea of it. Let's do um, maybe a couple buildings here. So I'm just going to draw a couple quick buildings here. Maybe this is like a street scene like this. And there's another building up here like so. Okay, so we have maybe like a street scene here. Like this. Okay, first thing I do is I'm going to go in with the darks. I'm going to go in with the darks of the painting. So maybe what I'll do is I'll get some French ultramarine blue and burnt umber and burnt sienna. And I want to make a really beautiful dark. There we go. A little bit of lizard and crimson too. And some more brown. Nice dark. I'm going to make a really cool looking dark here. Wow, look at that. So I'm doing some buildings in the city. Maybe it's uh, in the morning or in the afternoon, sunset. I'm using my flat brush here. You know, this is my basic beginner's flat brush, square brush. And then we just get some darks on here. So with the a la prima method, you're starting with your darks first, not your lights. And you're not going with a very watery wash like we did in the beginning here. So it's almost like the, ba it's almost backwards. The glazing technique is almost backwards of what the glazing technique is. So a la prima, you're starting out with your darks. And look here, I'm going to do some gorgeous. And then you can work in some lights, some yellow ochres, some golden colors here. So I'll put in some golden colors like that too. Maybe there's some distant buildings over here. 
That's the beautiful city. Lots of interesting things going on. Activity, cars, people, businesses, and people having a fun time. Maybe this is a sunset where it's the end of the day. Everybody's going out for some nice, delicious dinners after a hard day of work. And uh, so that's what we do. We have our darks in first, right? That's the a la prima method. You get your darks in first, which is almost, this is almost a completed painting already in a simple, you know, fashion. You know, you can add more details as much as you like, but that's the a la prima method. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll finish up in just a second with the light washes last. Okay, so we'll do the sky next. Light washes last, dark washes first. Okay, that's the a la prima method for the, for the most part. Okay, be right back. We'll finish this one up. Okay, a la prima method. We're finishing up. I just wanted to let this dry a little bit because remember, that's the, one of the keys to watercolors. You have to let things dry. So we are going to let this, these buildings and the streets and buildings dry a little bit. Even though we made it dark and it dries fast, you still need to let that dry. And the next wash we're going to do is the light wash, okay, for the sky. Now, for the sky wash, let's use some, uh, some green and... Cerulean blue and a little bit of that green mixture up here that we had for the trees. And then we're going to work in some uh, raw sienna. It's going to be a sunset or a sunrise. It's up to you. You can um, think in your mind. It may be sunrise, it may be sunset, but you're going to have that kind of feeling of um, warm colors in the sky. So I added a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of raw sienna for that orangey sunset or sunrise type of color with some blue and green. And let's get those in. Light wash now, not dark. We're gonna go really, really light, lots of water. And then of course the um, upper sky is gonna be more blue. So we'll start up here like that with some blue. Right, and let's get in with this. Raw sienna, just a little bit, and then just let's mix it on the paper. Mix it right up over the top of this. Go right over the top of what you already put on the paper, up on, on the blue. And just coat it on down lightly, though not too much water. You know, a lot of light wash, not too thick a paint. So your paint doesn't want to be thick, but you don't want too much water that it's flooding into your darker colors. Does that kind of make sense? You don't, that's the whole key to watercolors, controlling your, your water amounts in your brush and on your palette and in your painting. So you'll get the hang of it. It does take time though, a couple of years at least, probably to get the hang of doing that. And then we'll just make the street the same color as the sky, like that. And that is it, there you go. That's the a la prima method. You got in a beautiful sunset or sunrise color, whatever you like to believe it is. And that is what you have, a beautiful city street scene, sunset or sunrise using the a la prima method. And then here, maybe a beautiful countryside scene where you're out in the farmlands and you have a beautiful blue sky using the glazing technique, a couple trees, some grass, some fields, some bushes. But the basic idea is you'll see that's how both of these methods work. Glazing Technique and a la Prima. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, subscribe down below on the right-hand side if you want to stick with me learning watercolor. I do everything watercolor here on my channel every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're creating videos for you, so you'll absolutely get all the information you need to create beautiful watercolors. Okay, so we'll be back in uh, the very next uh, uh, few days or so creating more beautiful watercolors. Okay, everybody, see you soon.